All right, I'm filling up the alcohol tank because I'm going to clean off my desk and get started on another project because I have a K1000 in that should be pretty easy to fix, I'm hoping. And I need to clean my desk and I wanted to make a, another video, a little, little snippet. It's a little thank you. Thank you to everybody watching. Hell yeah. I love when things work. It makes me so happy. When my desk smells like a distillery. I'm trying to get better, okay, about keeping things clean. But here's the K1000 in question. Now I talked to the customer. And he said, the customer said that the issue was the battery compartment. The solder is bad. There was an attempt made to solder it. And uh, let's, let's find out. Let's find out what he did. Uh, but I, anyway, I wanted to make this video to thank you all for watching because recently passed 1,000 subscribers, which was a goal of mine for a while because that's part of the YouTube uh, partner program or whatever. Once you get to a thousand, then um, start making money and stuff. At least that was the thought. Okay, so first off, I wanna point this out. A uh, clear way to tell whether or not this has been tampered with is the positioning of this wire here. Um, it's sitting right there. It should typically be coming out from that hole right there. It's not, so that's kind of an issue. Also, sometimes me and my coworkers at my past job, we would just have the wire run straight from here down through the camera, so you wouldn't even see it in the bottom there. Not that that matters too much, but that's just kind of a little anecdote. So we're gonna release the battery compartment. You know what? Points for trying, definitely points for trying, uh, but not really super effective. I do remember we were emailing back and forth for a bit. He's like, I tried tape. I was like, oh, and more power to you. I don't think tape is the best way to do this. Let's open up a window, because I gotta use the, gotta use the poison here. So yeah, a thousand subscribers. Pretty huge, pretty stoked about that. And yeah, I don't know. I have really nothing to say. I didn't have anything prepared. I just wanted to give a quick thanks because that meant, means a lot to me. You know, I, I started these videos out just to kind of help people. And that's kind of, I hope that I've been able to continue to do that. Also, it's been kind of cool to be able to advertise my business a little bit more, help more people out, and met like a lot of people that I've really enjoyed and would not have met otherwise, which I think is always a benefit. It's been a very interesting journey for me because I went to uh, went to film school, which is not business school at all, and it's not uh, technical school either, and I'm not an engineer. All of this stuff is pretty much self-taught. I'm having to figure out how to do tax paperwork, all that gobbledygook, and uh, that was not fun, let me tell you. I might make a how to do your taxes video, it's just me throwing the paperwork off a cliff. Kidding, I did my taxes, so don't come after me IRS. But yeah, just from like all the little stuff of operating a business, uh, answering emails, which I'm still working on, the website, which I'm still working on, um, editing all the videos, I've got another job, so I'm doing that and doing this. Like, it is kind of a lot sometimes. All the time, actually, it is It is quite a bit. Um, and it's funny, because I'll talk to my friends about some stuff that I'm working on. Right, Lucy. I'll talk to my friends sometimes about, like, the stuff I've got going on or whatever, and it's just always like, you need to take a break. And I'm like, ah, I wish I could, but gotta keep going. My, my thought process is if I just kind of keep chugging along, uh, I'll just get used to it. So far, that's kind of worked, but I do look forward to getting enough money off of this channel so I can 
hire an editor or pay somebody to edit stuff for me. So that kind of takes that off my plate a little bit. Even though a lot of the editing is just cutting out the times I say um, which is a lot because I don't script these videos. Anyway, I do have a lot of plans I, I would like to kind of run by because I'm stoked about them. And I'm not one that like, I don't really like to talk about things before I do them. I'd rather just kind of do them, you know? Because there's something about, there's like the psychological reaction of if you talk about your plans or if you write stuff down on a list, there's some sort of release that um, serves as kind of a precursor to that activity being done. You know, so it's like, oh, I have to fold my laundry. But by thinking about, oh, I need to fold my laundry, some people will register, all right, the reward uh, feedback in the mind will be, laundry's already been done. And I just don't want to be one of those people that says a bunch of things and then is unable to act on them. And I've done that before because I've said things like, oh, I want to write more on the website. I've not really gotten a chance to do that. Or, oh, I'm going to fix the store on the website and it's still broken. But I do have plans to get that fixed, actually. Like, legitimately, I'm going to sit down with somebody who knows more about uh, technology things than I do, which is not very hard to do, mind you. Website development and stuff like that, and hopefully can get the website stuff figured out sooner rather than later, because I would like to sell some of my cameras and stuff. So that's kind of one of the things that I'm going to be working on moving forward. And then I've mentioned this in a previous video, but I got a, a black magic cinema camera. And I'm really hoping to utilize that for more cinematic uh, projects and stuff. Cause I, like I said, I got an art degree, okay. In film production. And I'd really like to be able to put that to use. And I think the best way to do that is by this platform, this channel. So I'm not going to be stopping the repair videos. I'm going to continue doing repair stuff. Uh, but I do want to like implement more narrative elements. I've got a few short films that I've been working on for years and just not been able to finish. So I'll probably put those up here. More like little camera highlight videos, so to speak. Just like little projects that I find interesting to work on. Kind of what we're going to be doing. I don't really have any major plans on that front. Oh, oh, I caught that in my arm hair. Hell yeah. Oh, that's so disgusting. Okay. So yeah, that's that's kind of my, my plan if I had one. I've been working on a few projects that I'm really excited to roll out, but I don't want to like talk too much about it because that's just that's who I am. So you will see those in the coming months. I've got those interview deals. I've got a few more of those that I've been working on. So I'm gonna get to cutting those together. I'm really excited about them because they're a lot of fun to do. And I'm not like a, I've never like actually done interviews before. So it's, it's very fun for me to kind of learn how to how to go about that, like what questions to ask, and I'm looking forward to continuing that. So that's why the first couple I did were with like some friends of mine, like Gage, who I've talked with for, we've been, we've been homies for years. So I feel like pretty comfortable in our ability to carry a good conversation. The next one I have coming out, I'm pretty excited for, and then I've got a few more planned which are gonna be a little bit more inclusive to uh, people I don't know as well, but I'm very excited to talk about, talk to about certain things and kind of get their perspective because I feel like a lot of the time on this channel, I get very far into the weeds. And I just go back to this one comment that I got on a video. I don't remember which video this was. But it was one where I complained a lot about the placement of the frame counter. Yeah, this will be fine. And somebody was just like, why do you care so much about that or something? And I thought it was interesting because I don't really have a great answer for that. 
I think my thought is I spend so much time with these cameras that there are so many similarities between everything I kind of have to go resort to very small details because at the end of the day I think those matter a lot but it doesn't matter to the viewer watching as much because you don't have like over 200 cameras in your living space like I do which count yourself lucky it's not the life to live but uh, you know this is just something that I'm fairly passionate about very knowledgeable knowledgeable and I would say and because of that I'm trying to dilute as much of my as much of my experience as possible in a digestible manner and that sometimes comes across as very very specific so getting the perspective of somebody who has a little bit less experience and is coming at it from more of a photographer point of view strictly photographer i think is very interesting and something that i hope to continue to do with people from different walks of life with different systems that they prefer using so you can get a better idea of like for instance i don't like nikon we all know this but just because i don't like nikon shouldn't mean you also don't like nikon and i've seen that a lot on some of these videos where you know i'm talking kind of some smack about a camera someone's like oh no i actually really like that system and i'm trying to do this because what happens is, if this is way too bright, I end up just blinding myself throughout the day. Because Nikon doesn't work for me necessarily doesn't mean that it doesn't work for you. And the reasons that I don't like Nikon are very, very uh, annoying for some people. When I talk about like, oh, they just use so many parts and they're confusing to work on and all this stuff. Like, for some people, most people I would say, 99% of people who want to shoot cameras, they look at that and they're like, that is a dumb reason to not like something. I totally agree. Um, so I think being able to communicate with people on their preferences for systems and why they like that system, why they continue to use that, or you know, if they're looking at a different system, why that would be, or whatever. I think that offers better perspective for you, the viewer, as opposed to just me getting super in the weeds about the frame counter position or something of that sort. Um, so I'm hoping that that kind of carries on and I hope that this it can continue to be a project that uh, I work on because it is something I'm kind of passionate about. Like I really do enjoy good conversation with people. And so what we're doing here though, because I've kind of just been working and not talking too much about the work I'm doing is I'm just replacing the whole wire because it looked like there wasn't a whole lot of slack in the wire to begin with and the wire looked pretty chewed up I thought it would be better safe than sorry to just kind of do the whole thing so what I've done essentially is remove the top so I can access the top contact leading to the circuit board the light meter remove the front plate so that way I can access the rest of the camera so that way I can make sure that it sits properly, the wiring sits properly I should say. I loosened up the um, gallon meter so that way I make sure that the uh, needle sits in the proper place as it should and then I've got the wire connected here like so and now I'm just going to run it through the rest of the camera itself. I think I'm going to readjust this a little bit though, kind of shimmy it up some. There we go. Okay, soldering iron down so I don't stab myself. But yeah, so I'm hoping to do some more, like I said, some more interview stuff reaching out to other photographers. This is like, it'll be a little bit more of a interactive channel if someone's getting tired of just listening to me talk all the time. 
I've got a few lined up, like I said, and it's just going to be kind of a gradual process of bringing in people that I kind of dig. And then if there's like any recommendations that you all watching have, I'd be happy to try and reach out and set that up. But I do need to work on a few things, i.e. my recording situation, but that will come with time. This is just a kind of a bare bones operation. Okay, we're gonna have to do some real finagle in here. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is lift up the focus screen housing a bit. So we can get some more clearance underneath. There we go, tally ho. No real better way to explain what I just did other than loosening up everything so that way I can get the wire to kind of run where it needs to. Um, there's a little hole that sits underneath the galvan meter and uh, it's just a matter of positioning the wire so it sits properly, which is the least helpful explanation I can think of, but that's the one you're going to get for the time being. I don't know what I did. Oh man, my back just popped. That feels good. Okay, so here we have, this is the reason why I take the front plate off. So at this point I can, I can fully access the battery wire, kind of control where it goes. So this is where I was saying, typically what we would do is just kind of shove it through the hole right down here in the bottom. So that way you don't even see it right there. However, I'm going to keep it how it should be. Put it through the natural hole. So now we've got it through that hole. Just have it run all the way in there and you can see where it's sitting in there. Just kind of naturally where it should be. I'm going to now close this and just for the sake of not having too many screws hanging out, I'm going to put all of the front plate screws in. And because this camera is superior to others, it doesn't really matter what order you put them in, they just need to all go in to tighten that front plate down. God, I love working on K1000 so much. If I could just do this for the rest of my life, I'd be much happier. Big fan, big fan of the K1000. Don't know where that screw came from, but big fan of the K1000. Oh, that's, that is this screw right here. Okay, there we go. Front plate tightened back in. Put that down there. We've got this wire here, and as you can see, there's a pretty good amount of slack. Now, I did this on purpose because there's nothing worse than having all of that be done and realizing you don't have enough wire left. Now, this is still kind of a little bit of wire. It's not like a whole lot, but we'll make do. What we're gonna do now is get to the battery compartment here. On the bottom side, I put the poison solder in hopes that would kind of clean up the contact. I have the window open for ventilation because Lord knows we're going to need it. What we're going to do now is hopefully be able to access this and pop it up. Now, if memory serves, the customer had mentioned the use of uh, adhesive elements, glue, tape, as we saw previously, in a hope to get the battery to connect. I would not recommend that, personally. As someone who's had to do this multiple, multiple times in many different circumstances, this by far is the best method. Now, I really don't know what this is called, but this is just uh, poison, pretty much. It is solder for stainless steel contacts, of which this is. So just put a glob on there, that should do it. Come on, let's get to it. And you can see just how explosive that is. Put some flux to it. Okay, yeah, this feels pretty good. I don't have a headache, which is always a good sign. Let's 
trying to like dodge the fumes here. So basically this is about as good as it's gonna get. Um, the idea is, and I don't know much about soldering, so forgive me, but it's kind of basic. That poison stuff is used to kind of clean the contact and make it um, adhesive or solderable for the kind of normal flux, right? And then from there, you just should be able to zoink the wire onto there. So things we need to do now for this wire is uh, strip it, strip it down. Got my little skeezers here. What I like to do personally is take the wire, take the uh, little flux here. This is, uh, I don't know what these numbers mean. Again, art school. But it is kind of standard flux, I think. And I like to sit the soldering iron on the underside of the wire and the flux on the top to kind of coat the wire in the solder, like so, if that makes sense. So wire, solder, and then coat. And then from there, this should make it just a little bit easier to put that all together. Now, what I want to do, what you want to make sure to do if you do this, which this is one of those repairs that's like kind of easy to do if you do it in a well ventilated area, if you have experienced soldering, you probably honestly do it better than I can. Uh, but I wouldn't like outright recommend this just because it is a little bit challenging and it does kind of require a good amount of knowledge to do that. But if you are going to do it yourself, what I would recommend is making sure you get the positioning of this correct. So it's going to sit like this, which means you're going to want to solder this to connect like so, right? That's something we're going to work on here. And you want to make sure that you work on an unstable work surface as much as possible. It improves your uh, patience. All right, there we go. I mean, that was actually pretty simple. So for years, it was trying to find a way to get adhesives to work, trying to replace the contact with a different contact, trying to do all these sorts of things. And then it turns out all that was really needed was just better flux. So lesson to be learned there. And now, like I said previously, we're gonna run this to that side like so. And then from here, take our screws. Reattach. Reattach. And reattach. Okay. Now for the top, we have to remember that the plunger was knocked into the camera. Grab that. Make sure we push that up. Probably did this the opposite way of how I should, but that's okay. This sits like Just like that, and then this goes right. Oh man, my tummy's got the rumblies. I don't know why, I've only had coffee today. It's weird. Weird how that happens. You don't eat anything, your stomach's like, feed me. I don't get it. I don't get it. Yeah, back to the point of this video. I just want to say thank you to everybody watching, for watching. I really appreciate the uh, people have kind of stuck with it. As I've kind of worked on figuring this all out, I'm still trying to get my footing with stuff. Um, but I do hope to continue to share what knowledge I have with you all. Because I don't really believe in gatekeeping. I think it's kind of dumb. I think it shows an insecurity. And I think at the end of the day, uh, 
Like, what is the point of knowledge if I can't share it with people, you know? If I can't tell people things I'm interested in or like things that I, I, I know, one, I'm limiting myself because I could be wrong about a lot of stuff, which I have been in the past and I probably will be in the future. I don't get people that do that. But, you know, I don't understand everybody's perspective, so who knows? I could be a fool for doing this. I know that on a few occasions I've like shot myself in the foot because I've helped people out. They were willing to pay me to fix their stuff. So from purely from a monetary standpoint, I have kind of failed in that regard. But for the most part, I don't care. I'd rather just people get working cameras. And if that means they send it out to me to get it fixed, or if they just work on it themselves based off of my videos, either way, as long as they're happy, that makes me happy. At the end of the day, it's just what matters to me most is people getting out there, seeing how cool some of these systems are, how unique um, they can make their art, and that's the kind of stuff that I care about more than me making money. So what we're going to do now at this point, I'm just going to clean out the focus screen because there was some gunk in there, but it is working. So that is good. There's power to the camera. I hope that this was helpful. I know it was kind of a little bit discordant. There was a lot of different thoughts. Oh yeah, look at all that. This is what I'm talking about. These bumpers in here just get chewed up. There was a lot going on, so thank you for sticking with it. Um, if you want a better walkthrough of what I did, here we go. All I did was first open up the bottom, address the contact. Looking at the contact, I could tell that the wire looked like it was going to not be long enough in order for it to be reattached properly. So I removed the top, separated the wire from the top board here, then fed the wire through, measured it out against a length of new wire, cut that new wire out, gave it a little bit more leads, so that way I had more to work with. From that point, soldered the contact onto here. Then I removed all of this so I could get enough room to put the wire underneath the galvan meter here where it needs to settle. Ran it down through the front of the body because I had to remove the front plate to be able to do so. Fed it into the bottom properly uh, and then used the, a mixture of this Han Wu Yu uh, solder. If you can find that, go for it. I'll, I'll try and find it and put the link in the description down below. Mixture of that and this con uh, this flux here in order to connect the wire to the battery compartment plate, making sure that it's in the proper orientation so when you screw the bottom on, it's not going to be wedged out of position. And then from there, put the put it all back together, basically. And now we have a working camera. Uh, if you have any questions about that process, uh, comment below, let me know. I will try to do a write-up on this repair because it is a very useful repair to know. Or something else I wanted to make note of. Also, as I'm looking at it here, it appears as though there's some corrosion buildup right there. If you can see that. So I'm going to get in there and clean that off. Yeah, that's weird. A little bit of corrosion buildup. So I wonder if it was sitting somewhere kind of swampy for a bit of time. Uh, but yeah, that is, that's pretty much it. That is the K1000 light meter rewiring repair all done. I'm just going to kind of clean this prism off and put it all back together and call it a day. So I hope that you learned something. Hope, uh, hope I was able to help if you had any questions. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Thank you for subscribing, for the support. I do really appreciate it. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please comment them down below or shoot me an email, rompingbroncorepairs at gmail.com. I'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. Um, again, I am only one person running all this, so I do apologize if it does take a while. Um, I'm doing my best. But I do appreciate everyone's patience. Yeah, anyway, that's pretty much it. Catch you all in the next video.